Back in the end of June, we hosted the second mashup game jam. We ended up getting over 730 people joining the jam, and over 180 submissions by the end of it, which is incredible, and it beats out last year's numbers. This year, I challenged you all to make a game using the theme Unconventional Means. I wasn't able to play all of them, but I was able to play a whole 90 of them. And though I can't talk about all of them, I can highlight 20 of the best entries. But before that, let's do a quick lightning round of honourable mentions. Unconventional Platformer has you not move the player, but move the room instead. It's very short, but lots of fun. Skip and Hook has you use a hook to traverse around the level as a big strong man, and it does great on the black and white art style. Interdimensional Ranger Chaining Program does a great job of breaking the fourth wall and can be hard to find out, but when you do, you're hit with the- ah, that's smart. Poo Patrol gives you a very bizarre tower defense game where you protect your flowers from businessmen by having them run into poops that your dog makes. Yes, that was a weird sentence to say. Happy Shield Machine Hell Adventure gets you to defeat enemies by reflecting their projectiles that can easily end up in a fun game of bumper cars. Skeller Girl vs The Machine Uprising also has you use a shield to deflect projectiles, but offers a variety of enemies and a very nice art style as you defeat an onslaught of robots. Alpha Playtester may look like a simple platformer, but with a stroke of genius you can open up the debug menu and change the values of the jump height, move speed, and other values. Biofuel takes a note out of No Man's Sky book by having you traverse many planets as a lonely traveller that uses the planet's ecosystem to refuel your ship, and nails its cartoony art style. Tetris mixes up multiplayer base defense with Tetris, and the result is a game where you stack up Tetris blocks to form barricades. And though I was playing by myself, it seems like it'll be a lot of fun playing with someone else. Wildlife Camping Experience offers some fun trial and error where you construct a wacky course to move the car to the end of the forest. In d -ball, instead of shooting enemies, instead you move about to get the enemies to destroy each other, which does a great job at making you feel awesome at manoeuvring between the enemies. Command O is a FPS game where you move around using the command line, which is a really cool concept. Car and Driver is a result of someone going, hey, I forgot my golf ball, can I use your car? Which has, in this case, ended up in a very fun entry. Humiliation gets wacky with a squirt gun that you spray on people to make them look like they've peed themselves, and offers great voice acting as icing on the cake. Temple of Portals uses portals to navigate this uncontrollable explorer, and though the gameplay is a bit too quick for my slow reflexes, it has some well thought out levels. Going Up had me worried at first, thinking I would find the grappling tongue a little hard to control, but the game doesn't suffer from this much past the first jump, and instead you're left with a great time clinging to walls as you make your way up the mountain. If you enjoy controlled destruction, then you might enjoy Paleontological. As a paleontologist, you have to uncover fossils, but the tools you use are a leaf blower and a hammer, and the rocks are as brittle as a man's ego when online. This means that you have to be careful with how much you bash about to uncover these fossils, and having a limit on how much you can use the leaf blower gives good worth to using both tools. And I just love the paleontology teacher's bushy moustache. Now the next game, I don't know how to describe, except Plants vs Zombies, but a lot eerier. Truffle Mind is a tower defense game where you have to defend this giant purple tentacle thing, which I'm guessing is the Truffle Mind, from a horde of boars that, well, want the truffles. This game does quite a lot to fit the theme in different ways. You don't kill the boars, but scare them away. And when you place five towers on the column, then the column gets cleared Tetris style and gives you some leaves which you spend on more towers. It's a really intriguing mechanic that adds strategy to your placement. And to back it up, you have a lot of different towers with different abilities, which makes for an engaging playtime. And on top of everything, I just love the art style. The colours and thick outlines work really well together. The Infinite Monkey Theorem is a common theorem that states that, if a monkey were to type randomly on a typewriter for an unlimited amount of time, at some point they would write Shakespeare. One Million Monkeys takes this theorem and turns it into gameplay, where these monkeys type words and you have to select the ones that apply to the subject, so they can write your essays for you. It's a very unique concept that fits perfectly for a game jam, and makes for a very enjoyable time, and the difficulty ramps up nicely so that it doesn't get incredibly hard. It'll be very interesting to see if this idea can be expanded on in the future. Now it wouldn't be right if I did this video without mentioning Journey to the Hot Tub. The jam results had winners in 7 categories, and this one won 4 of them. The game is about helping this robot get to a hot tub, which is a pool of lava, and you do that by moving, holding, or dragging enemies in the environment. 
This game has a lot of character. Giving a face to every object makes it feel like you're interacting with a populated world. You'll come across a wide range of enemies too, which keeps the gameplay fresh and new. I will have to say that the game can be very difficult, and I'm not the fastest with moving my mouse around, which caused me to struggle a bit with some levels, but the game is still very much deserving of its votes. The next game will take you back in time. The Sisyphean Ninja Escape sequence is a game that could have easily been in an arcade in the 80s. The visuals and audio completely match, and the gameplay is limited to three actions. Jump, deflect bullets, and switch positions with an enemy in front of you. It's simple but very effective. Every time you kill an enemy feels so satisfying with the audio, and the teleporting mechanic turns what would have been a simple gun and run into something a lot more fun. The game overall is very well done, and I could play it for hours. If you're a bit disappointed that the previous games haven't featured enough chickens, then maybe you'll enjoy Eggs vs Pans. You'll have to defend your base from pans that appear from, I'm guessing, another dimension. But you have to pay for turrets and refill them with ammo. Both can be done using eggs. Eggs is currency in this world, and you have to place your chicken in front of the hutch to collect such eggs, which already strikes up an interesting balance between sorting out your turrets and collecting. And to suit the difficulty curve of the game, you can also use those eggs to spend on upgrading your egg generation speed, or add another hutch. This game has a perfect amount of content that it warrants more than just one playthrough, and with your wide selection of different types of turrets, there's definitely different ways to play. One of the most aesthetic games from the jam was Four Seasons to be Reborn, and with good reason for getting first place for visuals. You play as someone who had died saving a cat from being hit by a train, and have struck a deal with the Earth to help prepare the seasons so you can be reborn. You sit on this cloud and move around using the season gun, and paint all the trees to move on to the next season. The game's visuals immediately remind me of Untitled Goose Game, and the gameplay is very loose but fun. I had a very enjoyable time moving to the perfect spot, and then spinning around to get all the trees around me. It's quite short, and very simple, but I would love to see this game expand on its gameplay and offer new types of season guns. The next game, Knights Can Be Creative, really has a lot of dual meaning to its name. The first being that you play as a knight who had their sword bent by a dragon's fire, who now uses it like a boomerang. The second meaning is that this game is like they made with no budget and had to find creative ways about it. I mean this in the absolute best way possible, and this game holds that idea on its sleeve. Just listen to the audio, everything about this game makes it feel so wholesomely homemade, and that's without even mentioning the brilliant idea of using a sword as a boomerang. Unfortunately the game is very hard and not forgiving, so much that I was only able to get to the first boss one time, but was it worth it? How dare you infiltrate my castle, I will destroy you now. Without a doubt, yes, it was worth it. Now the next game is very different to all the other games. It's text-based, which you don't get a lot of in jams, and yet there's so much to this game that you just need to play more. You engage in debates with other people Pokemon style, where you can make four moves, or the four Fs, feeling-based, facts-based, fun-based, and fish-based. This game is incredibly funny, and it plays into it, as you end up trying to run for mayor on an app and have to compete against others in debate to win. Very unconventional, and very entertaining. This game does not hold back on making fun of itself, and it's all the better for it. Gun Mountain has to be my personal favourite from this jam. I'm not usually a fan of shooting games, but this is definitely one of the exceptions. You play as this person who brought a gun to Gun Mountain, which is played off as unconventional, but really, to me it sounds the same as bringing your dog to the dog park. But what makes this game different is that you actually use a gun to propel yourself around from the recoil. I love everything about this entry. The choice of the colours are amazing. The music is calming, but also a little triumphant to match the feat of climbing the mountain. And the controls are very easy to understand with the help of the trajectory indicator. The game even gives you another bullet to shoot mid-air halfway through the game, which adds a lot more gameplay variety and challenge. While I do wish that there were more upgrades like this, the gameplay didn't get boring and was just the right length. It would be very cool to see this game get speedrun. If there is one game I can say really nailed the fun side of the theme, it would have to be Improvised Wizard. 
The idea behind the game is that you're a wizard who seems to have lost your wand, so instead you use a spoon as a substitute. However, since it's not a wand you're using, it means the spells you cast is random. You can cast many different spells, each with their own effect, but you can only see what spell you are about to cast, and the spell after that. It leads to a mixture of switching between offense and defense as you try to use the next spell in the best way. If this game is taken further, I would love to see some spells that aren't inherently combat focused. And what the next game did with combat was more conventional. They did add an extra layer to it that made it worthy of being on this list. Dragon Arena is simple enough. You go through rooms defeating all the enemies in the room. But the unique thing about this game is that you have this big slider that will stop when you defeat the last enemy in the room. And the slider determines the difficulty level of the next room you go into. So if you're not paying attention, you would either end up going into a room with a couple of enemies, or a room where you're completely done for. It's a nice unexpected twist that makes for a fun time, as it's completely up to you where you want to put the risk and reward. Time to dive under the sea. For the next game, Aquatic Means is a solid game on all fronts. Where you normally have to pop bubbles, instead in this game you have to guide the bubbles to the containers using your mouse as a fan. The music is very calming, and the bubble sounds works with the music to generate a soothing environment. Which is probably a good thing, as when you get introduced to things like propellers and spikes and jellyfish, it could possibly fall victim to getting the player frustrated. Fortunately, the game never has this problem, as you always feel very at ease when moving the bubbles around. The levels are pretty well thought out, and the game is at its best when the levels are completely contained within the screen. As you go on, the levels grow in size where you have to move the camera around to see the rest of the level, and while this isn't a bad idea, it does become a little difficult to keep control over all of the bubbles. But all aspects of this game are great. Overall, it makes for a very chill time. Now here's a game proving minimalism can be great, Candy Machine, where your objective is to get the candy out of the machine by rotating the machine itself. The hyper casual nature of this game makes you think that it belongs on the app store as it is, since the gameplay is incredibly simple but also incredibly engaging. The puzzles are satisfying and though they can be quite difficult, the developers added an option to change the speed of rotation, allowing accessibility and to adapt to the current level the player is on. If you want to have a fun time juggling balls that is PG rated, then Candy Machine has you covered. It's no surprise that Wrench Form blew me away. It did come first place overall after all. But this game is amazing. It's a lemming style game where you place fans, bounce pads and speed pads to guide the workers to the exit. It really nails the construction theme with the choice of colours and the soundtrack and the freedom it gives the player allows for a lot of experimentation. The game has a very low bar for completing a level. You need at least one worker to get to the end, which is probably a good thing as the movement of the workers can be different every time. This does mean that sometimes the same solution will have different results, but with how quick it is to stop and restart the play, it makes the whole trial and error part of the game very streamlined. There are quite a handful of levels too, and the game player doesn't tire throughout. Overall, this game is very worthy of getting first place overall. Ravending is a truly silly game. The game revolves around a raven who wants to get a packet of crisps out of a vending machine using a sticky hand. And if the concept isn't silly enough for you, the game is played by flinging the hand into the vending machine so that it reaches the packet. The opening comic panel is very welcome, and the music, that I can only describe as twangy, makes the game so much more fun. Flinging around the sticky hand could have easily led to irritatingly uncontrollable levels Levels, but instead, the levels are kept simple enough that this never becomes a problem, and yet keeps some level of difficulty. It's not a very long game, but it's also not very short, it definitely does not overstay its welcome. And if you're looking for a relaxing game to get lost in playing idly, then check out The Oblets. I ended up playing this for 20 whole minutes. The game is essentially flinging around yellow circles, but I got so lost in it that I forgot I was playing this for a game jam. In order to keep this Oblet society alive, you have to knock Oblets into each other to either join them together or split one in half. You have a timer that goes down, and to prevent that you have to sacrifice Oblets by flinging them off screen. 
The gameplay is very simple, but what makes this game so special is the incredible amount of polish put into it. The game feel on this is incredible. The audio is so satisfying. Every interaction is so pleasing and it's easy to see why I ended up playing this one for so long. If you're not an idle gamer type, then maybe don't bring a croc to a gunfight will suit your fancy. The game is hard, and I mean hard. It's inherently a boss game where you can only hurt the boss indirectly by charging up and deflecting projectiles with your sword. The three colour art style works really well, and the boss definitely looks evil enough to make you want to defeat them. Not only that, but the boss comes with quite a few different attack patterns, so the game doesn't get too boring. That being said, let me again repeat that this game is hard, so be warned if you want to beat this game, it might take you a while. Bomb Gwyn is a great example of why sometimes less is more. By sticking with a GBA style, the game can really achieve on performance. As a penguin you can lay down bombs and use them to give you a boost into the air. I will admit it did take me some time to realise that when you get launched in the air is related to where you're standing on top of the bomb, but once I had figured that out, I ended up having a lot more fun. And also, I'm pretty sure that's just me being a dum dum. Most of the challenge comes from the trial and error of blasting over large gaps or onto floating platforms, and due to the small levels and quick respawn time, this game never suffers from trying the same level over and over again. There's a lot of things to admire with this, whether it's the particle effects, animation on the end goal, or the penguin's ability to lay bombs in the first place. And talking about bombs, this last game has absolutely nothing to do with bombs. Domino is a very simple one. All you have to do is push the button, but to do that, you have to line up dominoes in the pursuit of the last one being knocked over onto that button. The game uses a pixel perfect and minimalistic style and doesn't put any stress on the player, which is probably a good thing when you lay out all your dominoes only to press play and this happens. The levels have good progression too, you soon get introduced to more buttons and more dominoes, and every level is a little celebration when you're greeted with this nice confetti animation. This is one of those games that just captivates you and makes you play for a very long time. If your game didn't get mentioned, don't be disheartened. Game jams are learning experiences first and foremost, and to everyone who submitted a game, you're all winners. And anyway, if you like this video and subscribe to the channel, I hear it'll bring you good luck in next year's game jam.